we've got this horrendous pandemic, COVID, and we don't know where it's going. We don't know if it's going to get better or not get better. It's led to these incredible economic uh, scenarios and conditions that people are facing, mostly working and poor people, but everybody in this country and, and around the world. We have all these issues involving systemic racism that have been raised as a result of the George Floyd situation. And we seem to have this growing lack of trust in government, which has probably always been an undercurrent in America, but it's much more serious now than it's been before. So given all these things, these what I call asteroids that are hitting the political side of the world, how does this change presidential politics uh, from what we have experienced before? And I think I'm going to start with Tamara because she was on first, and then I'm going to go with to Rachel afterwards. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I think that um, it is bigger than a lack of faith in government. I think that there is a degradation of faith in institutions more broadly in this country. And obviously, that is not a new development. It's something that's been growing. Um, and it, you know, it, it gets to the church, it gets to uh, the press, clearly, um, and government as well. And, and when you combine a lack of faith in institutions with a really scary pandemic, uh, when people just want facts, you end up with something really challenging. And, and obviously, the president, the current president, President Trump, um, sort of relishes in uh, trashing institutions um, in a way that presidents don't typically do. <laughs> um, uh, you know, presidents don't typically uh, sort of go out, you know, spread conspiracy theories about their own government while they're, while they're leading it. Um, so it creates this really unusual dynamic um, that, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure exactly what it means for the election, uh, but I will say that um, there, there is something that is showing up in polling and elsewhere, which is that people are simply exhausted. People are exhausted by the pandemic. They are exhausted, uh, especially people of color, by the systemic racism. And people are sort of exhausted by um, the, the daily drama that comes from the White House. Um, including Trump supporters are exhausted by the daily drama that, you know, that gets picked up in the, uh, I wish he would tweet less, which is something that we've been hearing for a long time. But, you know, there's, there is a difference between um, a candidate for president and someone who has been president for three and a half years. Rachel, you want to comment on this? Yeah, you know, I'm increasingly interested in, in the 30,000 foot view. I mean, as a political scientist and my training before I, I became an election nerd, um, you know, female election forecaster making predictions and horse racing stuff. I mean, kind of that's, that stuff is kind of like a byproduct from the work that I do, which is deeply theoretical and really grounded in voter behavior, voter psychology, and particularly in the area of political polarization. And so when we think about like the decline in trust of institutions and government, the decline in trust in, of the press, those are things that it didn't just, like they didn't just evolve naturally. They were products of like political choices that were made by, you know, political actors, right? So we have the, you know, emergence of, uh, re-emergence really of partisan news, um, you know, coming in the talk radio and then cable news and then the internet. And we have um, campaign, like our, our American campaign system is very unique. I don't think most Americans realize that most countries don't have a wild west, you know, two year long campaign <laughs> process where you can kind of just say whatever you want or do whatever you want to. And those things have really eroded public confidence. So it's not like the public just kind of naturally came to this, this um, really um, cynical place, right? They, it, it's a product of, of 30 or 40 years of really heavy, um, you know, advertising and media focus on Kind of spoiling the idea of, self, of of trust in institutions, and you know I, I'm increasingly looking too at the 244 years that the republic's been in function as a as a very short time window. We've had one near miss of the collapse at, in the Civil War, and as uh, somebody who studies political polarization, we are seeing behaviorally 
you know, a lot of overlap. Um, you know, when I, I'm, I'm going up to DC right after this interview for um, an interview and the um, election that I'm comparing 2022 is not 2016, it's, it's, it's 1860. So, you know, I should tell you a little bit about what's going on here in 2020.